Hello and welcome. Today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about the arrangement of the sensory system in the central nervous system. The first thing we need to understand is that there is two fundamental types of systems in the sensory system. The sensory system is divided into pain, temperature and touch, all being one system. And that's the easy one, that's the one we all understand, we all touch things, we all burn our fingers, we do all those sorts of things. The other and completely anatomically separate system is called the proprioceptive system. And proprioception is the process of understanding where your body is when you can't see it. The best example of that is if you close your eyes and try and touch your nose. The ability to touch your nose without watching your finger come towards your nose is what we call proprioception. If you just close your eyes right now and feel the soles of your feet as they are sitting on the floor, you can actually feel your weight shifting from different parts of the sole of your foot. That's also proprioception. It's the subconscious monitoring of muscle tone, joint position and all the factors that we don't normally monitor by vision or active perception. So proprioception is a very important part of our body. These two sensory systems pain, temperature and touch and proprioception run through different anatomical pathways. To start this story, let's focus on pain, temperature and touch. Remembering that the brain fundamentally sits at the top of a spinal cord. And uh, to talk about pain, temperature and touch, we're going to talk about a simple spinal nerve. Remembering from previous videos, we talked about neurons of the sensory system are derived from the neural crest. And the first order neuron is, is resident, its cell body is resident in the dorsal root ganglion. And it has an extension that runs out the periphery and has some sort of sensory system on the end here that senses pain, temperature or touch, often embedded in the skin. The other arm runs into the spinal cord. It enters by the dorsal horn of the spinal cord where it synapses with the second order neuron. So it synapses in the spinal cord, in fact let's draw the second order neuron in a different colour. It synapses with the second order neuron in the spinal cord that crosses over and runs up the spinal cord in the white matter of the spinal cord all the way to the thalamus. In the thalamus it synapses again with what we call the third order neuron to then head out to the sensory part of the cortex. This pain, temperature and touch system is called the spinothalamic system. Oops, S Y N T E M, the spinothalamic system. And you can see immediately that it's a three neuron system. The important thing to remember about this system is there are now, th there are now a synapse here, a synapse in the thalamus, 
Actually, we might draw the thalamus in sort of like this, so we remember that that's thalamus. And this makes these multiple synapses in the pathway actually make this a relatively slow system. In addition, these fibres are often unmyelinated and that also makes the system slow in conducting action potentials down its length. So we actually knew that because when you touch something hot and it's going to cause pain, often you can look down at it, see that your finger is burning, before you register the pain sensation that it's causing. This sort of slow process is because these fibres are relatively slow in the conduction of the action potentials and the processing is a relatively slow process. The other important feature to note in this is notice that low down here these fibres cross over to the opposite side. So sensation from one side of the body ends up being processed on the other side of the cortex. There is a process of crossing over and this crossover happens low down in the system. To remind us about cranial nerves, the same sorts of things apply to cranial nerves. Exactly the same fundamental architectural arrangement. A first order neuron with its cell body in the equivalent of a dorsal root ganglion, for example the trigeminal ganglion, second order neuron crossing over low down to then go into the thalamus on the other side to then have the third order neuron extend out to the cortex. So cranial nerves have exactly the same fundamental arrangement as spinal nerves when it comes to the spinothalamic system. 